Artificial intelligence is one, if not the buzzword of our time, but it's been around for 65 years. If I had to describe it in a few words, I would say that AI is a branch of computer science to engineer intelligent machines that mimic cognitive functions similar to the human behavior. It mimics learning and problem solving through advanced algorithms or with the help of machine learning to solve a problem and ultimately validate and verify the outcome. AI is an integral part of today's society and accompanies a user of a state-of-the-art mobile device daily. In its form of machine learning, AI has achieved tremendous success in image and video processing and recognition or natural language processing, to name a few examples. Apple's Siri, designed as the first digital personal assistant for a mobile device, uses language processing based on machine learning and it already celebrated its 11th birthday in October 2022. There are many more examples and the sky appears to be the limit as uh, with every new and exciting technology. Now, with AI and machine learning becoming mainstream, the wireless industry discovered the potential of this, in quotes, old technology. So it's time to look at how our industry plans to eventually adopt this approach to improve the performance of cellular networks even further, what the potential challenges are, and how that all relates to our current approach of testing mobile devices and wireless networks. Today we take a first step in this direction by discussing machine learning fundamentals. Let us start with reviewing some terminology. For example, from a Roden-Schwarz point of view, artificial intelligence is part of data analytics. By definition, we live in the age of narrow AI, or also called weak AI, which is defined by five key features. Logical reasoning, like for instance the chess champion AlphaGo, perception, which I mean is image and face recognition for example, knowledge representation, an example is here IBM's Watson trained for oncology, language processing, I already mentioned Apple Siri, but there's Amazon uh, Alexa and many, many more, and of course the entire field of planning and navigation, for instance the idea of having autonomous driving, self-driving cars. If there's weak AI, there's also strong AI, which means the machine uh, intellectual capabilities are equal to or even superior to human-like intelligence. Of course, famous examples are intelligent robots or androids, like Data from Star Trek The Next Generation, Skynet in the Terminator movie series, or Hades in my favorite video game Horizon Zero Dawn. Machine learning is a subset of AI, which defines the ability to perform tasks without explicit instructions by relying on patterns. Or in other words, building systems that can learn from datasets instead from explicitly programmed instructions. Deep learning is one approach to machine learning. The learning process is based on artificial multi-layer neural networks using a large amount of data trained to retrieve patterns typically used for prediction or classification. And generally speaking, there is an overlap between data science, big data and data management. If you talk about these terms and the related processing, you also talk about the cloud and cloud technologies. As mentioned, machine learning is a subcategory of AI. In very broad terms, machine learning algorithms build a model based on experience, also known as the training data. So it is a data analysis method that automates analytic model building. There are three types of machine learning algorithms defined based on the feedback available to the learning system. What do I mean by that? The first type is supervised learning, which is a task driven and therefore similar to how humans typically learn. We identify a problem, apply our current knowledge and solve the problem. If the answer is wrong, we mo modify our present knowledge and see if that solves the problem. In machine learning, the problem solution corresponds to the training data. The to be developed model corresponds to the applied knowledge. Supervised learning requires labeled data as input and known or expected output as training data. The network now learns a rule to map the inputs to the desired outputs. Supervised learning is the method that found the most adaptation in the industry. See the examples that naturally everyone can associate himself with. The basis for this is two main subcategories. Classification means finding the classes the data belongs to. For example, classifying the face, image to one registered user. Regression 
In contrast, regression does not determine the class the input data belongs to. Instead, it provides a value. A typical example for a regression problem is to have a data set of age and income and to find a model that estimates revenue by age. The difference between classification and regression is the type of correct outputs. Classification requires classes, regression requires values. The next type is reinforcement learning, which uses input, some output, and the grade of the output as training data. A prominent example is the AI in a computer or video game, where it's reacting to the user's actions. In other words, the algorithm learn to respond to a particular environment. And last not least, unsupervised learning, which is ultimately totally data-driven, as it only uses unlabeled input as training data. It seems at first difficult to understand, but it eventually makes sense as this method is typically used to pre-process data, explore patterns, and predict the output, such as a customer segmentation or targeted marketing. Machine learning uses the concept of neural networks. Although some audience members have heard the term neural network and have a specific idea, I would like to discuss the fundamentals quickly so everyone has a general understanding. With neural networks, we try to model how the human brain operates. In straightforward terms, the brain consists of biological neurons, shown here, interconnected brain cells, which process and pass on chemical and electrical signals. Today, we know that such a neuron receives the input via the dendrites, passing the data to the nucleus of the cell body, which processes the information. Then, they are passed onto the axon, a conducting fiber that connects to the transmitter, called the axon terminals. Finally, those axons terminals connect to the next neuron's dendrites. Intending to solve complex and multidimensional problems, the idea arose in computer science to model this behavior in software. The dendrites are our input values, x1 to xn, where we multiply the input values with a certain weights, sum them up, and add a bias. We pass the results on to an activation function that decides if the neuron fires or not. In other words, if it contributes to the output. One more word about the activation function. It yields the output or simply defines the perceptron's behavior. Today, there are several activation functions in use, initially sigmoid, to convert the input to an output that ranges between 0 and 1. This could be also achieved with tangens hyperbolicus, but most modern neural network uses either a softmax function or more recently a rectified linear unit function, which for example removes negative values from a dataset. As training my algorithm sounds very abstract to a computer scientist, the basic definition of training a neural network means to find and adjusting the weights and the bias. This is the concept of an artificial neuron, and I guess now it's clear that an artificial neural network is a combination of multiple artificial neurons. So let's put this into context from a test and measurement perspective. How about finding the settings on an instrument, like a signal generator and a spectrum analyzer, to measure the best error vector magnitude for any given signal? This is a typical method for customers to determine the performance of test equipment by measuring baseline EVM performance, connecting the signal generator directly to the spectrum analyzer, and recording EVM values while doing a power sweep from, say, minus 50 dBm to plus 10 dBm. If we plot those results, they typically form a bathtub curve. For lower power values, the system is usually noise limited. For higher power values, the system is driven into compression. Customers look for flat curves with the best EVM across a wide range of power levels. As one can imagine, there are quite some settings to consider to achieve the best EVM performance at a given power level. So back to machine learning. We could now think about a neural network that takes input parameters such as power level, the peak to average power ratio, the bandwidth and the frequency of the signal. That are parameters that contribute, of course, to the best EVM performance. As output parameters, 
we want the reference level and attenuation setting that we need to apply to our signal analyzer. Maybe there's even a way to play with settings such as automatic gain control and other parameters that would tune the RF front end of the signal analyzer to the desired settings. All we need now is training data, for instance, different kinds of 5G signals with different parameter combinations. As we all know, 5G is very flexible in terms of used numerology, bandwidth options, and modulation schemes. On top of that, there are numerous configurations of reference signals for different purposes, leading to minor or more considerable variations, for example, in terms of the peak to average power ratio of the waveform. Test equipment can help generate these data sets and use them for training a model to predict the best settings for the signal generator and spectrum analyzer. In addition, new and eventually unknown waveforms, ultimately standardized for 6G, would serve as a validation data to test the model's accuracy. So I just gave an example where machine learning might provide an advantage due to the complexity and multidimensional nature of the problem at hand. However, you can approach this deterministically and write software algorithms to adjust and fine-tune every setting. And this functionality is already today available for Rodenschwartz spectrum analyzers and signal generators. It is not based on a machine learning approach and leads to the same results, means the best settings for the particular waveform at the frequency and power level. There is no need to reinvent a wheel and doing machine learning for the sake of machine learning makes no sense. As you can see, it is essential to identify the use case and fully understand the requirements to determine if machine learning provides a real benefit. Our industry has done so and the first efforts are underway for FreeGPP's 5G new radio standard to enable the usage of artificial intelligence and machine learning, not just for network automation and network management, but also for other areas such as the air interface. This can be seen as a stepping stone on how AI and ML is used in a 6G standard. But what these identified initial use cases are is a topic for another video in our video series called Think6, where we discuss interesting aspects for the next generation of wireless communication, aka 6G.